they help, help me. So um, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about two things that will help build value in eliminating a think about it, right? Think about it's kind of one of the number one statements that clients like to make when they are, whether sitting across from you, whether they're on a video call, it's one of those things where it has a couple of different meanings. The first thing I want to cover with regards to a think about it can really be overcome um, on one of the slides here when you talk about the kids. And if you don't use these particular slides, it's not a big deal, but you still need to build value in the carrier. Show them, show them. I don't care if you get on the website and they get to see, like, for example, if, if you take them to the website, and, they, and you can show them, for example, even here on the carrier quote calculators, right over here, even if you show them the different carriers, they need to see the logos, they need to see the names. Uh, I just choose to do it right here on this particular slide. And the reason that you wanna mention uh, somewhere in the beginning, uh, you're talking about mortgage protection, the reason, to, reason that you're there, and what you're getting ready to do is because is because people have got this pact that they make with themselves, right? Uh, whether it be husband, wife, you know, it could be two brothers that buy the house together. Uh, it, 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 I've seen, I've seen uh, mother, son, father, daughter purchase homes together. It doesn't matter what the makeup of the relationship is. What matters is they've kind of made this pact that they feel like they want to shop around, right? And one of the easiest ways to overcome that objection is not at the end when they give you the think about it, but at the beginning when you're kind of going over like what's going to happen. So as I've discussed many times before, and I did even just last week when I sent out a little training to, and I did it with some new folks, it doesn't matter whether I'm brand new or whether it's now after five years, I still do the same thing with every client. And I just don't get as many think about it as I'm hearing that are happening out out in the agency. So when I, after I let them know kind of who we are, I've identified myself, you know, showed them my, my, my IDs, my driver's license and my license uh, for the state of Ohio or whatever state I'm working in at that time. And I go over this, I bring up this slide or for some of you that don't use it, you can do this. So, you know, one of the, if, if, if I have to, if I have to make an assumption, Mr. And Mrs. Jones, I think one of the reasons that you might've sent in more than one form as we discussed a few minutes ago, is you want to make sure that you get the best coverage for the least out of pocket. Like if you're like me, like you want to shop around a little bit, right? Right. You know, there's over 600 and some odd carriers. We have 17 carriers. That, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to find the best company to give you the best coverage for the best price. Isn't that great? Get something out of them. Yeah, that's wonderful. Does that kind of make you feel a little bit better? Yes, it does. Ask a question where there's a response. Doesn't matter what you ask, get a response. Isn't that great? Yes, it is, Eric. Um, is that kind of what you wanted to do today? Yes, it is. Is that kind of why you sent in more than one form? Oh, it really is. Get them to respond. Great. Well, we're going to get that out of the way for you today. See, and that eliminates, or at least helps eliminate the ability to feel like they've got to shop around. Okay. That's one of the things that Equus has done for people. And you can word that kind of however you want to. Just make sure you're communicating that. So that's one way to overcome that particular think about it. And, and so hopefully that, hopefully that helps. Uh, the other thing that I want to discuss a little bit is the ability to make a presentation at the very end, or I should say during the opportunity where during here, where you're, where you're kind of going through what these policies do for people. And I'm, I'm speaking specifically uh, to that, that 60, 70 year old, you know, in fact, the, the, the example that I received from one of the agents was that 65 year old who's single, uh, single meaning maybe the spouse has passed away, they're not married anymore, they own the house, it's a $150,000 home, um, they have no children, they just have nieces and nephews. Um, and that comes up more than we think, right? Comes up more than we think. And it might even be a situation where, 
it's that uh, single woman or single man who the, the children are, are now adults. And they just don't feel like there's a lot of value there to protect the mortgage. And one of the things I think we miss is that, guys, we're not protecting the mortgage. We're not protecting the bank. That's the first thing, one of the first things you want to establish when you're, when you're talking with your clients um, is that we're not protecting the bank and we're not protecting the mortgage. We're protecting what matters most. It's actually your family. In fact, if you look right here, um, you know, it, it's about that individualized situation. So let me tell you what I say. So when I'm here and, I, and when I'm getting ready to kind of start my presentation, this is where I, I let them know. So, so what, it doesn't matter whether it's a family with five children, whether it's a single man and he has no children. And I would have established that already before I ever started this, by the way, in my fact finding and in my building, making a connection with people, I find out how long they've been in the area. How long, how long have you grown up here in, you know, in Richland County or Mansfield, Ohio? Did you raise all of your children here? Great. Well, I see there's three on the wall. Is there more than the three? No, just the three. Great. Where do they live now? So you get to know where they're at. And here's why that's so important. You get to understand the makeup of the family, but you also get to use that information so that when you go to talk about what to protect and why to protect, you have a why. I almost anticipate the objection. I anticipate a think about it, which is why I talk about the carrier so much and the shopping around. I anticipate them trying to make a statement to me about, well, all of my, you know, I don't have any children. There's no no reason to do this. I don't, my, my children are adult. They're doing really well for themselves financially. They don't need the house. It would just be a burden for them. Okay. You need to anticipate the objection. So the more information that you gather in the beginning is going to be to your benefit to build value in protecting the equity of the home. So when I start my presentation, when I'm talking with clients, that's exactly what I'll say. You know, folks, I, as we transit, and you know, I'll say, so Mr. Jones, you know, I would love to sit here and keep talking to you about the Cleveland Browns and kind of how ter terrible they are, and we're never quite sure, you know, when they're going to get a winning team. I think it's probably time for us to talk about something that matters a little bit more than the Clevelands. Why don't we, the Cleveland Browns, let's talk about your family. Let's talk about protecting your family. And, and obviously, you know, Mr. Jones, we are not remotely here to even talk about protecting your mortgage or the bank. You know, no matter what happens with you making that mortgage payment or not making that mortgage payment, they're going to sell the house and, 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 and resell it and take all that equity. We're here to protect your family. We're here to protect what matters most. And so then you, you walk in here and you start talking about the benefits of the carriers. We're going to eliminate, you're going to let them know that we're going to do some shopping around and to find out the find the best coverage for the least out of pocket. Uh, we're going to go into the fact of, uh, you know, what is the reason for the in-person visit and all that good stuff. But when we get to that pain point, the point to where you as an agent have to really find what, what's going to make this, this person move and really why they sent in that form is, is here. So let's specifically deal with that single person. I'm going to do the man first and I'll do the woman second. Okay. Cause sometimes they're a little different. Okay. So let's take the first scenario of a gentleman who 63, 64, 65, just somewhere in his sixties. And he has a son or he has three children. And by the way, this is the close. You want to help eliminate to think about it. You, you, if you, if you don't want the premium payment, of 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 dollars a month to be an issue. This is what you have to master right here. Okay. So I'm going to say, so Mr. Jones, um, I need to, you know, so that I can better serve you and protect your family the best. I need to ask you a few questions. Um, they're going to seem a little personal. That's because they are. Uh, we actually work with an agent. She says, I'm going to get a little snoopy. And I just need to make sure that I ask you enough information and gather that so that I don't overcover you, but I surely don't want to undercover you either. So let me ask you a question. 
if you would have passed away yesterday, if you would have died, who's going to be responsible and who are you going to trust the most to either A, take this home, sell it, to protect the equity, make sure those mortgage payments are made with the policy that we put in place today. Okay, did you hear what I just said, guys? Like, I, I acted like we're doing this. So, Mr. Jones, let me ask you a question. That I, so, I don't overcover you or undercover you. I need to ask you a couple of questions. It's going to be a little snoopy, a little personal, but it's going to help me gather enough information. If, if you would have passed away yesterday, like if you would have died, who are you going to trust the most? Which one of your sons? You said you had three of them. Which one are you going to put in charge to go ahead and either, A, get the house sold, you know, to protect the equity, maybe divide up that, all of that equity, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, whatever it is amongst the three boys, the grandchildren. You probably thought about maybe putting a little trust funds together, maybe for the grandchildren with the equity of the home. I'm not quite sure what you're thinking, but do you see what I'm doing, you guys? I'm spending the money. Because whether he made the pact with himself that he wasn't doing anything, or whether he made the pact with his wife or with his son, maybe his son knew that he was going to send in this form and said, Dad, I don't care what those people tell Like, you're not doing anything. So there's a pact, right? So I'm going to go through this one more time. So, Mr. Jones, I need to ask you a couple of questions. They're a little sensitive, but it's really why you sent in the form. Um, you know, I surely don't want to overcover you, but I, of course, I don't want to undercover you either. So uh, it's a little sensitive, but like I said, I, you, you totally understand it. It's why you sent in the form. So, sir, if you would have passed away yesterday, like if you would have died, um, which one of your three sons have you thought about that would be the most responsible to kind of put in place of getting the check from the mortgage protection uh, insurance company to, A, you know, make the payments on the home so that when the house sells, you're protecting that massive amount of equity, whether it be, you know, 30, 40, 50, 000, whatever that is, because I, I'm sure that, you know, that's the main focus and what you're thinking is the last thing you want to do. And it's kind of a rhetorical question, but I obviously I'm going to ask it anyway. You don't want to put the burden of your payment of $950 a month onto one of your sons, do you? I mean, you don't, that's, yeah, it, well, exactly. Of course, I, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. Um, and that makes me feel good because if you said yes, I'd be a little concerned. <laughs> but do, now, do you see what I did there? Like, I, I, I got him to a, well, of course not. I wouldn't want to do that. But he's, he's talking. And I asked him which one of his three sons. It could have been two daughters and a son. Which one is, whether it be one of your daughters. Whatever. See, you, you gather that information up front. That's one of the reasons you do that. And then, and then when he says, well, it would probably be, and a lot of times it's the oldest sibling for whatever reason. It just may be like a seniority thing, a respect thing. So let's just say he says that and says, you know, Eric, to be honest with you, it's probably my oldest son. Okay, and I always ask why. It's cementing his decision a little bit more. So, sir, now, now why is that? Is it just because he's the oldest? Is, is he actually the most responsible? Well, yeah, yeah, he really is. He's done really well for himself, and I just trust him to be good. Because obviously one of the things you're going to want to do once this is put in place, see, everything I say is in a assumptive manner that, that it's done, it's over, it's afterwards. We're doing this. It's never if. Okay. And I'll say it. So, nope, that totally makes sense. Um, I'm the oldest as well. I know that that's the same way in, in my home. So, yeah, because obviously once this, you know, not if something happens, sir, but when something happens, you know, your son's going to get that check from the insurer. Like, what? paint the picture, right? Tell the story. Paint the picture. Your son's going to get that check, and then he'll have one of a couple of different decisions to make. He can either, A, put the house up for sale. And he'll go ahead and make payments to the bank out of this check. And what he's doing is he's, he's protecting the equity of the home. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But, you know, because there's going to be this equity in the home right now, Mr. Jones. It's not as much as you would want. But every time you make a mortgage payment, that mortgage goes down and the value of your home goes up in the sense there's this gap. And you, just like you sold your last house, you got the difference between what it was worth and what you sold it for. That was your money. Well, nothing changes here. I haven't, and this is a value, this is an important statement. I haven't met any one yet. Not one of my clients have made the statement, well, I, will, I don't care what happens to the, to, to the home. Like, of course, well, yeah, you may not care what happens to the home, but I'm sure you would care what happens to the money 
that's in your home. Like, for example, right now, Mr. Jones, if you had twenty or thirty thousand dollars in your savings account, would you put it in your will to just let Chase Bank or First Federal or Wells Fargo just keep the money and donate it and do with it? Well, of course not. You'd have one of your children, like that money belongs to your family. You realize that the equity of your home is just like a savings account. That's exactly what it is. You can't access it without a transaction of selling the home or doing a home equity line of credit or a refinance. But it is a savings account. Like you do understand. See, he needs to understand that. See, he needs to see things your way. Your, this is your sale. You're in his home or you're over a computer, but this is your sale. Sale meaning it's your opportunity to take control and to tell the story that you want to tell. You have the license to protect families. Don't ever leave the home and say to yourself, somebody else could have gotten this one. I missed it. I know I have said that. But, I, but sometimes when I do, I'll ask myself, did I do everything I possibly could have done? Did I pull out all the stuff? Did I tell the right stories? Because see, now go back. What am I doing? I've got a single man with a couple of children, and I'm not asking. I'm telling him. So, you know, so just do it one more time. This is, this is, a, this is a training tra training call, right? So, Mr. Jones, let me ask you a question. So, if... if, if if you'd have died yesterday, if you'd have passed away, which one of the three children um, are, have you felt in the past or you're feeling right now would be the most responsible for making sure that the equity of the home is protected, whether that be by the sale of the home, like making the mortgage payments out of the policy that we'll put in place today. Uh, he'll get a check. He'll make the payments. He'll call the bank, say, relax, don't worry about it. I got this. We're going to make the payments. House gets sold. Now, whether you have 20, 30, 40, 50, it doesn't matter what the amount is. You want that money divided up either A, a lot, you know, like maybe between your three sons or your three children. B, you may say, you know what, y'all are on your own. I want to protect my grandchildren. So I'd like you to take, if it's $50,000 and I have, you know, uh, five grandchildren, I want them to each have a $10,000 college fund. So that, you know, when they walk across that stage and graduate college, they know that grandpa thought about their futures. Grandpa, see, you're telling a story. Now, sir, have you put some thoughts to that? Is that kind of what you're thinking? Or did you have some different thoughts? And you're going to get a couple, one of a couple of different reactions. You're going to get a reaction like, wow, you know, I never, that's a great idea. I never, you know, yeah, I like that. Or, well, no, I just, it goes all to my oldest son. I don't have a good relationship with my, my last you know, son, I mean, he, I don't care what, okay, you're going to get whatever it is, but you're, but you're, what you're doing is you're spending the money. Now, some of you have received this objection and we just covered it a minute ago, but I'm going to cover it again because you get it more than you think. When they say, well, Eric, to be honest with you, I don't really care what happens to the house. And I'm like, and then I always act like I did something wrong. And this is my reaction. Oh, you know what, sir, I apologize. I, I don't think I worded that correctly. You're right. I actually, if I passed away, I don't care what happens to the house either. But see, I've got my family to protect. But what I do care about is my forced savings account in the equity of my home. Let me describe to you what I mean, Mr. Jones. Do you have a savings account right now? Yeah. I don't need to know how much is in there, but let's just say there was $10,000. So what, what you just said, and I know you don't mean, but what you just said was if I die, then Wells Fargo can just keep my savings account. I don't really want that to go to my children. Well, of course not, right? Like you want to keep that money. Well, right now and down the road in 10, 15, 16 years, whatever it is when you passed away, you're going to have a forced savings account of money to do a couple of different things. Maybe it's to pay off some of your children's debt. Maybe it's to put in college funds for your grandchildren. Give them a head start that maybe you didn't have. Isn't that kind of what we love to do as grandparents? You know, spend the money. So these are the – see – when, when you get to think about it at the end of the sale, it's usually for one of a couple of different reasons. A, you didn't establish right here, you didn't establish that you're, you're price shopping. Okay, that's the first reason for a think about it. It's why they make another appointment with another carrier. I mean, with, with, like with another agent. Okay, if you, this is a think about it right here. Another think about it is, is they're not quite sure why you had to come out. 
They didn't understand the eligibility and the suitability part of it. They didn't understand what the policy meant. Like, why? What's the point? Why do I have this? You didn't cut. You didn't give the basic. Maybe you didn't go over the living benefits. Okay, or the critical illness, the chronic illness, the terminal illness. You could even go as far as to demonstrate to them uh, about about this, right? About the fact of you know why mortgages go into foreclosure in the first place. What happens when getting somebody gets sick? Right, the income goes down, your expenses go up. This sheet is on our website. You should be using this in your presentation. Okay, this builds value and credibility in a mortgage protection policy. Right, that's what it does. That's what it does. So um, think about it. Come from not thinking like with that single guy we're talking about. See, when he says, well, I don't really care what happens to the mortgage, I agree with him and say, sir, I totally agree with you. With the home, don't even care, right? Like, I'm not going to be living there anymore. However, what I do care about is the equity in my home. And then I'm going to go into a little bit more of that loan officer, uh, what I see a lot of people do when I was a mortgage loan officer. So here's the, this is a great reason to protect the home right here. Let me, and then always put it on him. So let me ask you a question. Do, if your father... If you're dealing with a female, say your mother, if your or your parent, if your parents would have left you their home and a mortgage protection policy to make payments, you know one of the things you probably could have done that would have given a lifelong legacy? You could have taken the money that you received from their mortgage protection policy, maybe paid the house down to a fifteen, twenty thousand uh, dollar note. And we know that the home now is worth what, a hundred, hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty thousand. Like, use the mortgage calculator to show them what the payment would be. And and for those of you that don't know how to do that, it's right here. So let's say that right now, you know, their home is worth one hundred and fifty thousand, right? You can show them that their payment. See the monthly payment right here. See that? That's seven hundred and sixteen dollars plus taxes and insurance of about one hundred and fifty, hundred and seventy-five bucks. Let's just call it eight hundred and seventy-five dollar payment. Like that's their mortgage payment. If that if their if their home is a two hundred thousand dollar home, their payment's nine fifty four, okay, plus taxes and insurance. This is a basic mortgage protection calculator. This calculator builds value and will help you close policies. Period. We're going to use this today, but you can you can bring this up and show them, you know, and and, they, and then paint this picture. So, Mr. Jones, if your if your father would have left you his home, let's say you know you you took a mortgage protection uh, policy uh, uh, payout and paid it down to like fifteen twenty thousand. Let's just for the fun of it, let's see what a mortgage payment is on a twenty thousand dollar home. It's ninety five dollars. So let's just say one hundred and fifty dollars of taxes and insurance. So let's just call it two hundred bucks. What if the home's uh, rent on a hundred and fifty thousand dollar home is twelve hundred dollars? Well, that's like a, so every time the renter sent you a check for $1,200, you only had to give $200 to the bank. That's $1,000 a month. What kind of a, what kind of a college fund would each one of your grandchildren be able to have if you were able to put $1,000 a month towards them? Well, if you didn't have any grandchildren, what would $1,000 a month done to your credit card bills? What would $1,000 a month done to your car payment or your personal mortgage payment? But do you see what it is? You've created this legacy and it's kind of what you get the opportunity to do. You're not going to boast about it. You're not going to brag about it. But man, what do your grandchildren get to say about you after you leave, like after you're gone? Let me tell you about my grandpa. He was the coolest guy in the world. Look what he did for me. See, these are the things you get to choose what they say. It's your legacy. See, you want to eliminate think about it. Become good at telling stories. And you can use these stories, by the way. Okay? So when you, the only difference between me and you, or Jason and you, or Michael Wright and you, or Matthew and you, Greg Archer, Chris Tinsman, Rod Williams, uh, you know, Craig Collins, guys, four, five, six, seven, ten, sixteen years, seventeen years, right, Craig? See, we just have more story. We have more appointments to develop the skill sets of telling stories 
and finding pain. That's the only difference. So the more appointments you run, the better you become at this. So that's the single man with kids who gives you the objection. I don't, um, I don't really care what happens to the home. Well, then you have to paint a picture of what happens and then, and, and agree with him, right? I don't, you know what, Mr. Jones, I, to be honest with you, as far as the house is concerned, yeah, but, but I do care about the equity of the home and what it can do for my family. Now let's go to the, let's just, now let's just switch, uh, switch on. Let's go to the woman. She's 64, 65, 70, whatever the case is. And I'm going to ask her the question. So Mrs. Jones, let me ask you a question. It's a little sensitive, but you know, it's kind of why you sent in the form. Uh, even if it was subliminally and they usually laugh. Um, if you would have passed away yesterday, like if you would have died, which one of your daughters do you trust the most at this point to protect that, that all that equity that we know is going to be in your home? It's like that four savings account, right? Like, who do you trust? Well, I'd be my oldest daughter. Okay, perfect. And so when she gets the check from the insurance company that we choose today, the one that's going to give you the best, the best coverage, like, what are your thoughts? Like, what do you think you'd like her to do? So now you're going to get her involved. What do you think you'd like her to do? Do you want her to, like, maybe sell the home, take the money, divide it up amongst the grandchildren for college funds or just, like, a little bit of a head start? Do you think she might make the home a rental? That way there's continual income for, like, the rest of their lives. I mean, not only does it help your oldest daughter, it could help, like, every single one of your family. I mean, could you imagine being able to take a $1,000 check every single month and other than maybe basic expenses and taxes and stuff that maybe she puts away to be able to send each one of these, they did three daughters, right? To send each one of them 250 to $300 a month that they get to use however they see fit because of a legacy that you left, Susan. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. I never really thought about it like that. Yeah. I mean, how does that make you feel knowing that you, you actually have the possibility to do something like that? That's real. Eric, I had never thought about that. That is really, wow, there's a lot to this. Well, there's really, see, now, now you got to overcome that, right? Well, there's not a lot to this, but, but it, it's really a simple process, but it's just, we're doing, we're here to do one thing, and that is protect your family. Because between you and me, I mean, do we really care what happens to the house after? Well, no. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the after thing. It's, it's, the, it's the equity of the home. We, I mean, we love the bank. We appreciate them giving us our loan. But we surely don't want them to to take the house and the equity, right? Of course not. So this is this is what you're overcoming. Those that's and then again the mortgage calculator can be such a great piece because you can show them you can show them in the mortgage calculator. And these are really easy to understand, you guys. All you do is you put in the loan amount. You never even need to change the rate. If I look at this, if I look at the payment, nine fifty four at four percent. If I change it to five, if I change it to five percent, okay, it's just it's not that it's not that big a deal. It's, it's not that big a deal. Just leave it at four percent. You can even I mean, if they want to put the actual rate in, that's fine. But and this is the extra payment calculator part of it. You don't don't really mess with that right now. So here's what you want to do: so put in the loan amount, leave this. If it's a 20-year loan, put it in as a 20-year loan. If it's a 15-year loan, put it in as a 15-year loan. It, most people do a 30-year loan. And it gives the mortgage payment, gives the number of payments on that 30-year loan, which is 360. That's 30 years. This is the total payments that they're going to have to make. This is this number times this gets this. And then this is the number the bank makes over 30 years on. So they borrowed 200. This is the interest of 143. The total payback is 343,000. Okay. All right. And then this right down here, how you read this, this, this is month one, two, three, four, five. And this is the balance. Every time you make a mortgage payment, the balance goes down. On the fifth one, it's here. On the 16th one, it's here. At the 10-year mark, which is 10 times 12, never thought to use those times tables again, right? That's payment 100, 120. They're now 157,000, right? Okay, so what, where does, why does this have value? This helps build value in that same person, that 60, well, it doesn't really matter who it is, whether they're married, single. This is how you build value in actually um, 
doing a lesser option than the whole mortgage. When you sometimes you have those people that say, Eric, if I can't cover all two hundred thousand, I don't even it doesn't I don't even want to bother. Like it doesn't even make sense to me. Okay, and you're going to have those kinds of folks, right? So, but so this mortgage protection calculator, whether you have the thirty five year old that's married and has two small children, the forty five year old who's married and has three kids at ten, twelve, and fifteen, or whether you have the the, the late fifties, which is that you know one one out and two that are in top, whatever the deal, it doesn't matter. It the mortgage calculator is used the same. And so what what I do is I write this out. Okay, this is a mortgage protection illustration. I'm just letting you know that's what I call it. But what I've done, I do this right in front of the client. Carry some extra sheets of paper with you, right? And I'm literally writing this out. So I say, sir, I want to show you something a little bit. You know, a lot of people think that they have to protect the entire mortgage of 200000 I want you to know something from my point of view. My job is, what I'm here to do today is obviously get you protected. But Mr. Jones, I, I need you to understand, it's important to me that you understand that I'm not here for me, that I'm here for you. And so I'm going to show you a way where, and I'm, I'm starting to write this up, 200,000, this is where you're more, I'm, I want you to know that I'm here for me, I'm not here for you. I'm sorry, can't stop, okay, don't laugh, stop. I'm sorry, I'm not here for me, I'm here for you, okay? Because, you know, if you think for one minute that you have to protect the entire 200,000 to protect your home, sir, that is just not true. In fact, you can do it for a lot less, and I'm going to show you. Okay, I'm probably going to show you and then write it down. I'm probably going to show you to protect half of it, maybe three quarters of it, maybe even lower than that. But I'm going to let you determine. But I'm going to show you an example of what I'm talking about. Okay, so you're going to draw this little line out first, zero paid off. And then I want you to draw a line and put 10 years. I want you to draw a line and put 15 years. And I want you to draw a line and put 20 years. You're not writing this number until you have this number. 200,000. Line zero paid off, line 10, line 15 years, line 20, and then write 200, 150, 20. It's, it's all the mortgage, 75%, half of it. Just write it there. You don't have to write mortgage protection illustration. And then here's what I do. I go to the mortgage, I go to the mortgage protect, protection calculator and I'll say this. I say, now, sir, let's go ahead and put in your mortgage 200,000. Now, let's see what you're going to, oh, now, stay with me to make sure I do this right. See, I want him to follow along. All right, and if, and if you're doing a video conference, it's the same thing. So, ma'am, do me a favor. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll down to number 120. Make sure I do this right. Okay, payment 120 right there. Okay, that 142. Okay, and we're going to, you're going to, oh, 157. You're going to write that down, 157, right, 157. Now, let's see what you're going to, oh, at year 15, which is which is 12 months times 15, that's 180 payments. There's 180 payments. You're going to owe 129, 129, 15 years, and then you're going to owe 20 years, which is payment 240. You're going to owe 94,000. Oh wow, you know what I messed up? Excuse. So it is well, not okay. So it is it is 94, not 107. I did I did do that right, didn't I? Yep, 94. Now, I was up here. Okay, my bad. So 94,000. So that needs to be 94,000. So here's the point. So usually you make your point at 10 years and 15 years. You never even have to go to 20. And let me show you how this works. Okay? So now what I've done, I want you to see me do this. So then you have to tell the story. And here's the story. So, Mr. Jones, let's look at this calculator one more time. So we know that right now your mortgage is at 200,000. But in 10 years, what did it say we would owe? In 10 years, we would owe 157. So let's put let's put 157 in the calculator. But let's just say we did half your mortgage, not three quarters, not all of it, and just did $100,000. So just for simple math on our heads, 157,000 minus 100,000 is what? It'd be $57,000, right? Okay, 57,000. Now, Mr. Jones, see your payment at 749 on the 200. Okay, watch this. As soon as I hit 57,000, wow, 272 plus taxes and insurance. Let's just say it's 420 dollars a month, right? Or so. 
Okay, are we agree with that? Yep. Okay, so let's write that down. Four hundred twenty-two dollars a month. Okay, in in in, and that's with the that's with the hunt minus of a hundred thousand brings it down to this. Now, at the fifteen-year mark, you're going to owe one twenty-nine, right? You're going to owe one twenty-nine minus a hundred thousand is right. Big math, twenty-nine thousand. Your payment is one thirty-eight plus taxes and insurance. You're looking at about two hundred eighty-eight dollars. Now, stop right here, you guys. Now, let's if we have a couple in front of us, and let's say he's making five thousand a month and she's making two or three thousand, or vice versa. Here's what you say. Remember, income. This is the close, you guys. This is the close. So, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, let me ask you a question. All right, say, so Mr. Jones, you're making five thousand a month, and you die tomorrow, or you die next Tuesday at four o'clock, or you die ten years from now, or twelve years from now. And your wife's able to take a hundred thousand dollars with this half year mortgage, and at the ten year mark, her payment becomes four twenty two. At the fifteen year mark, her payment becomes two eighty eight. Now, ma'am, at your current income of twenty five hundred a month, two thousand a month, whatever it is, guys, Mr. Jones, let me ask you a question. Can your wife afford two hundred eighty eight dollars a month out of her twenty five hundred? Well, yeah, ma'am. Do you feel comfortable with that? I do. Even at the 10-year mark, could you make the 420? Well, yeah, I could. And at the 30-year mark, we know it's even less, right? Well, right. Okay, so do you see that even though, Mr. Jones, a lot, and I know you're not one of them, even if he was, I know you're not one of them, but there are people out there that think you have to protect your whole mortgage to protect your family, the equity of your home, her credit, her sanity. No, you don't. Not even for 75. Do you see that literally half of your mortgage allowed you to do everything that you really wanted to do, even if it was subliminal? Today, I get to protect my wife, the bank, the mortgage, or the equity of the home, her credit, her sanity. So everything gets protected for a lot less. Now, you may feel like maybe doing 125 or 150 or something like that is more viable. And that's fine. I will show that to you. In fact, I'm going to show you all three of these prices, uh, premium payments anyway. But I want you to know it doesn't matter to me which one you pick, because we just walked through the scenario that says, I can do it for a lot less. Does that make sense, Mr. Jones? Does that make you feel better knowing you don't have to spend as much to do that? Well, yeah. See, he hasn't even seen a price yet, you guys. But see, it makes him feel better knowing that he's doing it. So how did we do this? We took, we took the 157 minus the 100, got 57K, put the 57 into the mortgage calculator. That's what we did, right? I'm just making sure you guys know how to do this. 57,000 into the mortgage calculator, and it gave the payment. That's how we came up with that, okay? And then do this to the 15-year and the 20-year as well. But you start with this, you draw this out, and then you just add the amounts of what it is, 10 years, 15 years and 20 years. Guys, I do this in every single house. Every single house. It takes three or four minutes. You know what it does? It helps eliminate, think about it. Let me ask you a question. Now, let's say you get it for $100,000 at $67 a month and you leave, take the application and go, and they have an appointment. Today's Monday. They have an appointment Wednesday night at 5 o'clock with Joe from ABC Mortgage Protection Company. Do you think he has a chance? Do you think, I mean, here's what, when I say a chance, most agents are taught to top down sell. Most agents are taught to show 200,000, here's what it is, full boat, cash back option, blah, 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 blah. That's how they're taught to sell, right? Could you imagine being that agent, not knowing that the agent before them came in and did this? And then here's what I say. After they, I showed them the prices. Now, yeah, Eric, this thing makes sense. Let's do it for the $67 a month. And then I always say this, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I'm so glad you saw the value of this because you know what? There are going to be so many things over the next couple of years down the road. They're going to come up in your life where you're going to need an extra $20, $30, $40 a month, maybe $100 a month, right? And see, this is one of those things that you never, ever want to get rid of. Like, let's make sure we're protecting the family, protecting the equity of the home so that you can accomplish all of your goals, leave the legacy that you want to leave. But here's the thing. If you ever do want more coverage, 
you know that I'll write it for you, right? Like, I, it, it's not a big deal. Like, I can come back. We can rewrite this. If you feel, you know, nine months down the road or, you know, when I call you for your annual review next year, because I'm going to be your agent for a very long time. You know, we have a word in this, in this, we have a term for that. It's called a run and gun agent. Most of our car insurance agents are like that, right? They only call us, you know, every four or five, six years. Okay, that's not going to happen. Your family is really important to me. I have one too. That's why I know it's important to you. I know how important my family is. So every year or so, you're going to get a call from my office, from me, saying, hey, how are things going, Joe? Great. Anything changed in your life? You guys still in the house? Okay, great. Hey, did you put any more thoughts to that? Do you want to go ahead and inc- No, I'm good with 100000 Eric. That's perfect. Great. Okay. See, at any given time you ever want to make this more, we can do that. But for right now, sir, this is all you need. That guy comes in or that gal comes in on Wednesday night trying to tell him he needs 150, 200,000 cash back. Uh-uh, uh-uh, not going to happen, right? There's no way. Or now let's say you're the one that he was there first. He did, this is the best, this is the best way, right? He did 200,000 or 150,000 or 175,000 or whatever that was, right? And I come in and I take a look at the, you know, what, what they do. And I'm, I might say to him, Mr. Jones, let me ask you a question. And, and, and you may have made this decision all by yourself to do the full 200 K, but, um, can I ask you a question? Why did you do the full 200,000? I don't, I don't know. I'm not quite sure why. Did you want it that way? Or was that way the agent just kind of shared it with you? Well, yeah. I mean, they just, yeah, I, they just showed me the price for the 200. Okay. Well, because really, I don't know. I mean, again, they might've done this, but sir, I've been doing this for quite some time. I, my job really, see, nothing changes. You guys, I'm getting ready to say the same thing I said like 15 minutes ago. I'll say, now, Mr. Jones, I, I'm not quite sure, you know, again, I'm, I'm the agent here. I'm the one with the license, right? But I can tell you the only person in this room that benefits from you doing a $200,000 policy or something lower, like a $100,000 policy is, is, is me, right? Is the actual agent. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'll say most of my clients cover about half, maybe a little bit more than half. Can, can I walk you through like a 10 minute exercise real quick? And if for some reason it doesn't make sense to you, I can be on my way to my four o'clock. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Look, and then you walk through this scenario. You walk through the, and then you say, and you say, now, sir, that, did you see the value? And he goes, well, yeah, that's, um, yeah, no, I'd like that. Would you, so would you much rather, would you want to go and just want to, want to do the hundred thousand? Yep. Ma'am, how do you feel about that? Perfect. So, so this makes financial sense at $67 a month, Mr. Jones. It does. Ma'am, how about you? Does this make more financial sense than, than spending the 147? Yeah, it does. Okay, perfect. So, Mr. Jones, why don't you go ahead and get your driver's license? Ma'am, you get yours as well. I'm going to go ahead and get out the iPad, and we're going to go ahead and do a request to coverage, okay, and get you protected. See, there, there's your, okay, there's, a, there's the last way to eliminate and think about it. This is just as important as anything else we've talked about today. When you ask for the order, when you ask to take an application, you're asking for trouble. You're asking for a think about it. You're asking for an objection. Okay. You never ask. You tell. If you've done your job here, if you've done your job here, 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 and here, and talked about whatever you need to, you don't have to worry about getting a think about it, or we have an appointment on Wednesday. Okay, because here's what it is. I'm going to walk through it nice and slow one more time. So, so obviously, Mr. Jensen, we've done the hundred thousand. Let's just say it's sixty-seven dollars a month, and here's the close. So, sir, I've shown you the two hundred thousand for one forty-two, the hundred and fifty thousand for ninety-four, or the hundred thousand, which is what we illustrated today, for sixty-seven dollars a month. Now, I'm asking you both the question, do you see how the $100,000 protected everything in your life? It protected the bank. It protected the equity of the home. It protected your wife and your two children or your wife and your two daughters, whatever it is, okay? Your wife, her credit, which is what she's going to need now more than anything. And she'll even have, because that equity you're going to have, see, here's the thing. If you died in 15 years, Mr. Jones, and you only owed 129,000, and you had an extra 100 grand, your wife might say, "You know what? 
Honey, Eric's right. We originally borrowed 200000 Our home was worth about two forty today. In 15 years, let's just, let's just say it's worth another 100000 It's at three forty. Well, the difference between 129 and 340, 40 is, is $211,000. So even if I just use this money to make the mortgage payments for six or seven months while the house sold, I mean, I could have like, gosh, like over a quarter of a million dollars to be able to take care of anything I needed to take care of. And we did it for a lot less, like literally $67 a month. I mean, When's the last time you guys went out to dinner and didn't spend $67 at Texas Roadhouse or Red Lobster or Applebee's? And then they'll talk about that for 30 seconds. Okay, so does this make sense to you guys? Yep. So do you see the value of protecting just about 50%? And if you ever want to do more, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, just like pick up the phone and shoot me a text message or give me a call. Like I'll come write it up. No, no, this is perfect. Okay, so the $67 a month, for half your mortgage, protect everything in your life. Mr. Jones, does that make sense to you? It does. Ma'am, does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Now, here's the big question. Does it make financial sense? Like $67 a month is not going to break your bank. You're going to make that payment no matter what, right? Are, it, it is? Okay, perfect. Ma'am, how about you? Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, perfect. So tell you what, Mr. See, I didn't, because if you do this right here, if you say, well, what, so you guys want to take an application and see if you can get approved? If you ask that question, Jason Patello, Michael Wright, Matthew Wilson, Greg Archer, uh, Chris Tinsman, Rod Williams, what's getting ready to happen? You gave the mouse the light. And I don't mean to disrespect our clients. I'm just making a statement. When you say, so great, would you like to take an application to see if you can get approved? You just opened it up to these things. And if you're getting these, here's, that's why. Here's what they say. Well, do we have to make a decision today? Eh, wrong answer. Well, uh, we have another appointment on Wednesday. Okay, so you're, you're opening it up to something else. So when you get, I call it getting four yeses. You can really go to much as six. And let's walk back through that again. So, so you guys, you guys understand that. The, so you guys see the value that the sixty-seven dollars at half your mortgage protects everything in your life for the next ten, fifteen, or twenty years, and either can lower your mortgage payment, provide you four, five, six, seven years worth of protection, protect all of the equity, ma'am. Whether you want to sell the home and take a big chunk of your equity and go do something different, B, make it a rent, walk them through that. No, no, this makes total sense. Okay, so this makes. So, so, so this makes sense, right? Like you understand this, Mr. Jones? I do. Ma'am, do you understand it? I do. That's one yes. Uh, so from a financial standpoint, like the $67 a month isn't breaking the bank, right, Mr. Jones? Is that the case? No, this is perfect. Ma'am, how about you? Like, you're okay with that? I perfect. Okay, great. That's two, right? Now, all right, we'll tell you what, Mr. Jones, why don't you go ahead and grab your driver's license? Ma'am, grab yours as well. And I'll go ahead and get out the iPad and we'll get that request to coverage completed. Well, great. And I just, and I start reaching for my bag, reaching for my iPad, reaching for my tablet, reaching for whatever it is I'm reaching for. Right. Because I did, I did this. I educated, I built value. I told them what was going to happen. I gave them the benefits of their policies, not only if they die, but what happens if they don't die and they get sick. We walked through the mortgage calculator with this scenario right here, and we took it away from any agent that thinks on any level they can come behind me and show more value in this than I did here. If you come behind the agent, you, nothing changes in your presentation. You realize that nothing changes in your presentation. Nothing. If Whether you're in the house, sitting on the porch, or over a Zoom meeting, or whereby, or join me, or, or FaceTime, or whatever it is, if you guys are consistent in everything that you do, you will eliminate and statistically reduce the objections that you get. See, this makes me look smarter than I am, because I'm not really that smart of a guy. 
But when you let the technology in our lives do the work for us, nobody else is doing this, you guys. Agents aren't taught to use this. Now, if you're a brand new agent getting ready to go on your first three or four appointments, you don't necessarily have to do this, okay? That's why you call your manager. Do you know that, I mean, in fact, look, Jason, Crystal, Mike, Rod, uh, Matthew Wilson, Chris Tyson, I can think of a, I can think of a bunch of you agents that have called me in the house and guess what I'm doing? Hey, Jason, do me a favor. Do this. I'm going to, I'm going to do something real quick. Hey, can you write this down, Jason? Yeah. So write down 200,000. And I just want to make sure that I think I've got the math right. See, I'm, I'm acting like I need to, I'm going to think I got the math right. So in 10 years, Jason, he's going to owe 157. Can you write that down? Yeah, I can. Okay, and then draw the line for 10 years. I think we covered this in the last training, didn't we, Jason? Yeah, we did. Okay, so write down $422. Okay, and then write for 15 years, write down 129000 and then write down $288, and then write down 94000 and then write down, you know, and then you got it, and say, so let's just do this real quickly, just so that I, I can see this, for because I'm not really there. See, I'm, make, I'm making excuses like I'm not there, like I need to do this to make sure we're doing best by you. And we're doing this right over the phone. And then we, and I'll say, Jason, and the, yeah, perfect. So Jason, 422, 288. Okay, perfect. Now, Jason, now, if you, and I'm going to go ahead and let you go, but if you, see, I did that for you. And now when I hang up the phone, now you, all you have to do is walk through it. And then just remember to do the, the, the close, right? The close is what? The close is this. So Mr. Jones, I priced 200,000, it's 142 a month. 150,000, which is 75% of your mortgage, that's, that's a 102. And then the 100,000 is only $67 a month. So I priced the whole mortgage 75% and half. Now we, we, our illustration half, which is the $67 a month. At the 10 year mark, your mortgage, your mortgage payment for your wife would only be 422. And based on her, based on her income at 2,500 a month, if you passed away, we know she could still stay in the house if she wanted to. And then that does make you feel better, right? Like, were you kind of concerned about that? Yeah, I totally agree. And most people are. I would be too. But at 15 years, with the same 100000 if you really wanted to give all that money to the bank, and you may not, but let's just say you did, then your mortgage payment would be $288. Now, ma'am, you know, like, that's even a, that's even a better scenario, right? So, so here's the thing, you guys. It's, it's, April 13th in 2020. Even if something got, wait until 2000, you know, 30, 2035 for the next 15, you have nothing to worry about from a financial standpoint. You'll always be in a position of strength, Mrs. Jones, no matter what happens. Even if something happens in the next 10 years, you're going to be okay. So, I mean, does that make you feel better? It really does. Yeah. I mean, I know, Mr. Jones, do you feel better? Oh, I, yeah, I totally do. Okay. So now with regards to the 100000 at for $67 a month, um, does do, only doing half the mortgage make financial sense for you as well? I mean, do you feel like you need more? Uh, no, no, I don't. I think the 100000 is fine. Okay. Ma'am, how about you? Do, you? do you think that's okay too? No, yeah, I really do. Eric. I think that's just fine. And then the $67 a month, Mr. Jones, like that's not going to break the bank? Like you're okay with that? That's kind of like a trip to Applebee's, right? So is that okay? Yeah, no, Eric, that's totally fine. Ma'am, do you feel okay with that too? I do. Okay, great. Well, tell you what, Mr. Jones, why don't you go ahead and grab your driver's license? I'll go ahead and get out the iPad and we'll do a request of coverage and get you guys protected. Fantastic. So that's the close. We built value. We found pain. We eliminated pain. And then we closed. But the close, the close was in the presentation. The close was here. The close was here. That's what it, that's what it does. So hopefully guys, this has been instructive and I purposely did it this way so you could play it again and again, uh, versus having a live call and maybe even me kind of maybe messing this up. But, um, this, we're going to do more of these things. So hopefully this has been really instructive. Hopefully. And again, if you guys have any, and, and if you get, tell you what I'm doing, I'm going to send the mortgage calculator out to all of your managers. I think all of them actually have it, uh, but I want to make sure that each of you have it. It'll become a staple and what you get as a new agent. For those of you that are listening to the call that aren't licensed yet, 
Uh, this might have been a little, little much for you, but I promise you guys, the more you see this, the more you watch this, if you can master this, your closing rates will skyrocket. Your placement will be, be exceptional. And your persistency, when these policies will stay on the books. Agents will not be able to come behind you and take it. And they, surely they do not necessarily, you, they really don't want to be the first ones in because if you do this afterwards, you sound way more educated. You know what you're doing and it's, uh, you're, you're in a, just in a much better position. So you guys, I uh, appreciate you. I love you guys. Have a great week. Hopefully this has been instructive. We'll talk to you a little bit later. All right. Bye bye now.